Hi, I'm Jessica Jackson of the Thriving Motherhood Podcast, and if you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be a full-time stay-at-home mom, homeschooling my four kids, and running a business in small pockets of times, and having really fun adventures, and doing projects with my family, I would not have believed you. Back then, I was a struggling mom in this t- tiny cinder block home that felt guilty if I put my baby down, let alone did anything by myself. So I, today, am going to share with you the very strategy and planning method that I've developed over the last few years that is a allowed me to get a lot of things done and that I have taught mothers literally around the world um, to be able to help them accomplish the things that really matter most to them in the small pocket of the time that we all have as moms. For those of you on iTunes, thank you so much for leaving a review and on YouTube for subscribing. Uh, It's great to be able to connect with you every single week. Hi, I'm Jessica Jackson, and this is the new way to thrive in motherhood by leaning into who you are, what you love, your unique family situation and personal mission to create a life that you actually want to live. I want to invite you to join me in saying no to the life of the exhausted supermom, burnout, victim thinking, being pulled in so many directions, suffering through survival mode, or being lost in motherhood and say yes to building strong families and moving forward on our greatest goals in order to create a fulfilling life that we are excited to wake up to each day and become a soaring mother. This is the Thriving in Motherhood podcast. I really relate to just feeling like all of my time and energy is going towards household things. And whether it's because of the mom guilt, like I feel bad if I do something else, or if it's just the reality of cooking takes time, cleaning takes time, uh, loving children takes time and pouring into them and reading the books and playing, like all of those things are good. They're nurturing, they're wonderful, they're valuable, and they take time and energy. And so oftentimes it can feel like there isn't space for anything else. It's hard to find space to work on the project that matters to you, to be creative, to practice the skills that you love, like playing an instrument, or maybe it's something like growing a business or creating a nonprofit or writing a book or, you know, any of those things that are important and valuable as well because they are us, right? There's more to us than just being a mom um, that matter, but it but it's easy to get lost in that. And so um, when I had my second child, you know, that first year or two of motherhood, I I loved it and I struggled and struggled in so many ways, struggled to find that time and energy to do anything else. Like, how do I, how do I organize things in my life to be able to do that? And then also just that guilt of feeling like I couldn't, couldn't spend time doing something else. And I will say on that guilt, small aside is I just have learned that as I do things for me, it only inspires my family. It only builds us all up. It only, um, right? You know, rising tide raises all boats. So that's positive. And I've got lots of other episodes about mom guilt. But um, today I really want to focus on just those practical things of, well, if we want to create that time, we want to create that space, how do we do it? How do we structure things so that we can be successful and and plan, right? And, And then be able to execute that plan. Now I have tried, you know, after those first two years and I had my second child now and I was like, I have got to figure this out. I want to be able to do other things. I don't want my days just to be long and endless and watching the clock and waiting for Andrew to get home um, just to do bedtime together, right? And waiting for my kids to take a nap so I have time by myself. Like, how do I structure things so that I can be successful. So the first thing I saw people trying was like, I should write out a schedule, right? Like I, that used to work. I could write out a schedule and I would write down like, okay, at this time we're going to do this and this time we're going to do this and this time we're going to do this. And I never was able to execute that schedule, whether it was, be, you know, because of a diaper blowout or because a nap took too long or a nap didn't take long enough, or, you know, we got distracted at the park or whatever it was like sticking to a schedule felt impossible for me. And it was very discouraging. And then I'd be like, okay, well, this really mattered. So I'll write it tomorrow. And I just felt like I was constantly transferring my dream plan for the day to the next day to the next day to the next day and it was very discouraging exhausting and demotivating so I just stopped doing that um I saw other people that like let's just write a to-do list right work from your list I love my list a to-do list notebook like that's a great productivity strategy but I felt like especially when I have my kids at home um, you know, they're not gone for eight hours a day at school or I don't have babysitters coming over to my home. Like I'm with them pretty much all day. Um, those long to-do lists, like if I have a moment to work, just trying to find the thing I want to do on my list that seems like a good fit right now or that I feel like doing right now takes time. And so by the time I had made that decision, moment had passed and it moved on. And so I felt like just a lot of these things that maybe work for other people at work, if you're gone all day long and have lots of time to figure things out, like those didn't work for me. 
And so I got a planner. I got a notebook. I looked at tons of planners and I was trying to figure out like, how do I do this? How do I organize it? And I couldn't find anything that I, that would work. And so I got a planner and I spent the next three years, um, really trying to implement and tailor all these things I had been studying for years about productivity and goal setting and and put them all into one notebook in a way that was effective for me that was both like it gave me the clarity that I needed to know what I wanted to do in any given moment but also was flexible and so that I wasn't constantly writing things week after week and I didn't have all these things that were left undone every week and or every day and I just was constantly transferring and so um, having said that, uh, I created what is now the Thriving Mother Planner uh, that has worked well for me for years. It is how I've gotten so many things done. It's how I have that time and mental energy and bandwidth to homeschool, to run my household, to get the meals on the table. We cook from scratch, like most of our meals, um, and still podcasts and send out you know a video like this. This is how I have time to do this, right? Um, every week. So I'm gonna boil it down. If you've been listening for a long time, this is brand new, hot off the press. My five-step peace method for planning your week. Um, and and the whole point here is I want you to be able to work through this five-step plan and to be able to feel peace because you're confident that this is really what matters most and you feel confident that you can accomplish it and you're not running from behind and constantly stressed, that this is something that you really can win. That's something that you really can feel good about. And the other thing that you need to know before we jump into those five steps is that you do not need to implement this all at once. This is why I love it so much. When we're we're building a foundation here, you are learning a skill set that will last you forever. And it's going to help your kids as you teach these things to your kids. It will last them forever. So this is a foundation that you're building and it's okay if it takes time to build it. It's okay if you just do one little thing and you get better at doing that one thing and add the next thing and add the next thing. And and the thing that I love about this as well is that every single one of these steps will make a difference. You just do number one, you're going to feel so much better. You add number two, you're going to feel so much better. So it's a very much meet you where you're at and and work with you where you're at. So if you're totally in survival mode, pick the one that would make a big difference for you right now. If you are crushing it and you're like, things are changing, I need to be able to increase my capacity, great, start working through these and you're gonna be able to increase your capacity. You're gonna be able to get more done than 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 you've ever been able to do before of the things that really, really matter and get rid of all that extra busy work, get rid of the distractions. And I'm not talking about your children, I'm talking about the things that we waste our time on that don't matter. So let's get into our five steps now. So the first P here stands for purpose. What is your purpose for the week? What matters most this week? Now, I we can look at this big. I like to create my vision for the year. I do it at the very front of my Thriving in Motherhood Planner, which is, by the way, encapsulates this entire piece method. So at the very beginning of the year, I've done all of this work figuring out what my vision is for the year. What matters to me? What are the projects I want to do? What habits do I want to create? What the systems do I need to implement in my home, my family? What experiences do I want my family to have this year? Um, just my own personal goals, my own personal projects. Okay, that becomes my vision. And so every week I like to look and say, what is a little bit that I can do for my vision this week so that I keep moving that forward? And all year long, those baby steps add up. But the other question that when it comes to purpose is what I asked is what matters most this week? It could be celebrating your child's birthday. It could be nurturing a sick child. It could be getting homeschool back on track and being consistent with that. It could be... Um, working on your marriage, right? Showing up and making sure that you're talking with your spouse every night for 10 minutes. But I want you to get really clear. What is the purpose? What matters most this week? And we want to start from this place because so often we talk about productivity, just getting a ton of stuff done, right? Checking off those to-do lists. But I want you to get the right things done because we Everyone has finite time, right? We all have constraints on our time. We all have constraints on our energy. But when it comes to our disposable things as moms, right? When it when we when we move apart from that cooking and the cleaning and the laundry and nurturing our kids, those slivers of time are less than the average person and we can make them work really well for us when we have clarity about what really, really matters. So we start with that P, that purpose. The second one is E for energy. 
And now when we're talking about energy, we often, I feel like as moms, just keep going on the treadmill. I'll say for myself, but a lot of other women that I've talked to from all around the world, we just get on this treadmill and we go and we go and we go. There's just never any end to the things that we can do, right? It, like there's literally no end to the things that we can do. And sometimes there are needs that we have literally around the clock. You know, if you've got kids that are potty training and having accidents during the night or nightmares or they're sick or they're teething or you're nursing a baby or you're helping kids with homework until the wee hours of the morning and you've got other little ones waking up early in the morning. Um, like it just, it really can go all the time. And so what I like to do every week is pause and I want to get some energy and momentum going by looking back and seeing what have I learned? What have I discovered? What have I accomplished? Where did we go? What were our, you know, good milestones or memories as a family? What books have I read? I want to just pause and assess and see and look back and celebrate all that I've done. Now, do I do this every month? Absolutely. But when I can, I like to do it within the week. And again, I do this at least once a month, but when things are going well enough, I try and do this each week in my planner. And I just go to my page of reviews, my monthly review page. I keep track of this review here. And I always start this exercise feeling like things are not going well. I'm not doing a very good job. I'm really lacking in all of these areas. And when I do this, I start to feel pretty awesome. And so this is a much funner place to plan from. It's way more enjoyable to plan from a place of, wow, I'm doing great. Wow, we've accomplished so much. Wow, I'm learning things. Wow, our family is like having these wonderful experiences in this way. You feel good moving forward instead of like, I just can't even. And you just look at these things as a big drudgery of have tos. I want you to leave that space of drudgery of have tos. Instead, look at it from a place of I can, I get to, I'm excited about. We want to get as many things in our life going from a place of I'm excited about this. And one of those big secrets is by stopping the treadmill, pausing, looking back, celebrating, feeling good, giving yourself this moment. And you can have done it in way less time than I told you about it, right? This can take 35 seconds. You don't have to spend tons of time, but it's really important. And when I work with moms in the Made to Soar Next 90 Days program or in my community, this is the thing that makes the big difference. This is the thing that like changes it all for them. It's just pausing and celebrating. We love to do it together in the community, um, but you can do it by yourself and feel awesome too. So, easy, easy, easy fix. Now, A is appointments. So this is where we're starting to get really tactical now when it comes to our weekly planning. So if I go to a week here, the next thing I'm going to do once I have clarity about the purpose of the week and I've paused and I've gotten some energy and some enthusiasm and excitement. And let me add the other part of energy as I want you to pause and ask yourself, how am I really doing right now? Did we just come off something really intense? We need more of a recovery week. Are people sick? And this needs to be more of a healing week. Are we needing to like pump up the energy and get things done and push through because there is stuff that just has to happen and we've got deadlines and it just needs to get done? Is this a week of we need to get back and become you know, just be consistent and hold things steady? Or is it time where I need to scale back and only do the essentials? I want you, like our energy is ebbing and flowing based on who's sick. How much sleep are you getting? Are you nursing a baby? Are you pregnant? Um, are you recovering? Are you like, did you just do something really huge for a work project? Like whatever it is, we need to evaluate that and plan from a place that's realistic for what's coming up. Like be honest with yourself in a loving and compassionate way so that you're setting yourself up for success instead of like, wow, you're really tired because of all of these really real life factors. And then you try and pile on a huge list of things you have to do this week and then you don't get them done. And now not only are you tired because you had a ton done and you were trying to get a ton of things done, but also you're mentally berating yourself for all the things you didn't do, even though you're already superwoman. So that's where we want to like draw the line and start just being a little bit more real and honest with ourselves so that we can be kind and compassionate. I've got a free on-demand video training for you today called Plan a Week You Can Win. If this episode is resonating with you and you want some more, this training will walk you step by step through how to plan a week where you can check everything off and set yourself up for success. And you can get that at thrivingandmotherhoodpodcast.com slash more time. All right, now back to appointments. So this is okay, tactical. So we've got here, I like to write on this column, my appointments. These are the things that you have to do this week. These are the things that are on the calendar scheduled. This is your doctor's appointments. This is your baby toddler's uh, library story time. This is your kid's, you know, 
dentist trip. I don't know, whatever whatever you have going on this week. Now, I ha- like there's I've got two formats in the planner. One is the hourly one. It's like your typical hour by hour every day. If you're someone with a ton of appointments, if you've got your kids in public school, if you've got lots of extracurriculars, if you're working and you have lots of scheduled things on the calendar, awesome. You can use that type of a planning system. But for me as a stay-at-home mom, I don't often have loads of scheduled appointments. And when I had little kids, I had very few scheduled appointments. And so using this format of just like I can write one or two things a week if needed or a day if needed most was realistic. And so it wasn't so discouraging to look at this endless blank page where I was like, wow, I really have nothing going on. How pathetic is that? You know, and instead it's like, wow, look, I've filled up the week. Perspective matters, right? It's like those scales on the bar graph. You want to, you want to make it swing in your favor visually. The next thing that I like to do is if there's something that is specific that I have to do that day. So this might not be like I have to do it at 930 because I need to be at the doctor's appointment at that time. But it's like I really do need to do laundry on Wednesdays and I really do need to do grocery shopping on Tuesdays, whatever it is. Um, That is what I put over here. But again, I'm not putting very much on these on these pages of like scheduled things because we want to be flexible, right? I want to be I want a clarity, so I want to know what has to get done, but I want to be flexible, so I don't want to load a ton of stuff up over here that I can't gauge because I don't know what's going to happen today, which is exciting, right? We can, when we, when we plan for the flexibility, we can be excited with the ebbs and flows of just normal family life because they are here. They are real and they happen. All right, the C in peace is choose three. So we are going to choose the three things that matter most this week with some like specificity to them. So I've got them right here. I call them my big three for the week. It's something I learned from Michael Hyatt over a decade ago when he was teaching this to like entrepreneurs and business executives and corporate people. And I was like, we need that. I need that as a mom. I need to know what my three things are. So We're picking our three things for the week. Now, for me, this is not necessarily three extra things. So one of my big three is homeschool. If we have school that week, that takes a lot of my morning. And so that is going to be a big three when I have it. Um, If we have a celebration, like a a birthday, we just had four birthdays in the last six weeks. So that was a big three a lot (laughs) when I had like every week, every other week I was doing that as a birth, you know, celebrating a kid's birthday, prepping for that. Um, Or if you have like holidays or people visiting, or if you have a big project, um, like that's going to be a big three. Now, the thing about the big threes is you want, you've kind of got three life domains. You got something for you personally, something for your family and beyond, whether that's your work, whether that's a job, whether it's a, you know, a passion project, uh, something creative, something you're doing for service out of your home. Um, Those things are your extras. And so a lot of time, you don't have one of those things every single week on your big three. But over the course of many weeks, you should be doing all of those things. And so it's a nice way to just collect data and say like, wow, I'm feeling horrible right now. Why is that? And you're like, oh, because all I've been doing is stuff for family for a few weeks. And really, I need to bring in something like one of my personal projects into the mix. Or wow, I've been working so much on all these projects. Things are filling off at home. Oh, wow, that's probably why. Let's bring something important to our family into this week. So you can kind of use it to gauge and also balance your life over the course of many weeks or months. Um, Because again, we want to be flexible. We want to be intentional. We don't want to drop the balls that are most important. All right. E is for everything else that needs to happen this week. What do we do with it, right? Because so far we only have scheduled things and we've picked the top three, but what about all those other little things you need to do, like calling the, to pay a bill or switching something on the, you know, answering an email on the computer that's important that you have not been doing, but it's like for church or whatever, or something for school. You need to respond to someone at school. Or what about those errands that you have to run? Or what about that conversation you need to have about banking information with your spouse? Where does that stuff go? Well, I'd like to put this in my context-based to-do. Now, and this is something I learned from April Perry. I think she learned it from Julie Morgenstern. Again, it's been like decades out now. But the the thing that I love about this is instead of having one long list and me saying like, what feels good right now? I can say, okay, kids are playing. Awesome. I'm going to make a phone call. Or, hey, it's quiet time. I can pull up my computer. What kind of tasks do I need to knock out? Or, hey, we are going crazy. We need to get out of the house. What errands do we need to run? Um, it's this principle of just batching the tasks, you can get a lot done in small pockets of time. Now, I'm not writing out my absolute dream list of everything I'm going to do in the next 365 days on this week. I'm writing down what I can do this week, actually do this week, because I already know my purpose. I know what my big three are. I know what really matters this week. I know what's already scheduled on the calendar. And so now I can take a realistic stock of what I actually can add extra into the cracks of my week. My goal here as I'm doing my planning is not to 
get everything done that I possibly could ever get done, but it's to get a really clear plan of what matters most to me so that I can accomplish those things this week so that it is so that I can feel the peace, right? That's what the peace method is all about. I want to feel peace because I've got clarity about what matters. I'm realistic about what I can actually accomplish. I've taken stock of my life to see what I can handle right now in this moment of time. And, and then I'm ready to move forward with confidence and peace. And when I get to the end of the week, it's going to be checked off and I'm going to give myself a rest. I'm going to give myself a Sabbath before I jump back in and do it all again. And it's going to be great because week after week after week, it's going to build that balance and that momentum and that clarity and that progress. This is how I have built this life slowly bit by bit, you know, created something that I am truly proud of in my homeschooling and in our weekly and daily rhythm with our family and with this business. And it didn't happen overnight. None of this happened overnight you know, my marriage, our house projects, our garden, our, like, it just builds slowly over time, but it feels so good every step of the way because we're pausing to celebrate as we go and we're pausing to see the progress and the learning. And that's how we really thrive, right? That is our thriving and motherhood here. But I want you to try this peace method out and which one, tell me in the comments below or think about it if you're driving, um, which one of these are you going to implement this week? I would love to hear what would make the biggest difference in your life. Which one of these five step? Is it having your purpose defined? Is it pausing and getting some energy going by celebrating the past? Is it getting your appointments written down so you know what's on the calendar, but not writing anything else on the calendar so you can be flexible? Is it getting your big three for the week, choosing three things that actually matter that you have to get done? Or is it just getting your everything else organized in a way that you can batch it out in a way that is most efficient? Um, so that is my, again, like, I don't want you just to listen to these. I want you to to try it. I want you to, like, change your life, right? By just doing something simple. And so this is my invitation to you, to all you moms at home who are trying to get things done, to give this a chance because this is how life is created in little bits, something you love, something you'd be excited about. Um, you can learn more about the Thriving in Motherhood Planner at thrivingandmotherhoodpodcast.com and really get into the nitty gritty details and set up the system with my free training, Plan a Week You Can Win at thrivingandmotherhoodpodcast.com slash more time. And I will walk you through bit by bit how to get this set up in your own life for free. So uh, have a wonderful week and I'm excited to talk with you more next week. Today's episode is brought to you by the Thriving in Motherhood Planner. With this simple system, creating a life you love is as simple as opening your planner and grabbing a pen. Every day with the Thriving in Motherhood Planner, you will know what to do next, what's most important, and what to fill those pockets of time on. You won't find yourself wandering around the house wondering what to do when the kids are paying nicely for a minute, few minutes. You'll be able to fill that effectively with moving forward on the things that matter to you. Follow the Thriving in Motherhood Planner's research-based system so that you can move forward on the things that matter to you no matter the season of life that you are in. I'd love to help you get on a better path, one that leads to peace and confidence in your unique life with the Thriving in Motherhood Planner. Learn more today at thrivinginmotherhoodpodcast.com slash planner. We were painted, watch the blossoms grow 